Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I'm sharing with you the books and resources for our Waldorf main lesson block on anatomy. It's called Hygieia, Nutrition and Physiology. It also covers muscles and bones. So the first resource I'm going to share with you is the Waldorf Curriculum by Live Education and you cannot buy this this particular main lesson block by itself. You can buy it as part of the entire year. And so this is one resource that is part of an entire curriculum, but the rest of the resources that I'm sharing with you today are ones that you can buy individually. This is the main lesson book for the main lesson block. This is a teacher resource. It's going to go over the information for the lessons, as well as the lesson activities and just the format of the lessons themselves. It also has an introduction at the beginning that goes through some some information on how you can set up your main lessons. It also suggests that you do your chemistry main lesson block before you do your anatomy main lesson block. And then it goes into a little bit of the Waldorf philosophy on education for the middle school student, as well as other information that might help you as a teacher or a parent when you're putting together this main lesson block. So this is a resource that I've only used once, maybe twice, and so I'm less familiar with this content. So this is going to be a little bit more of a slow process for me rather than some of the other main lesson blocks that we've done in the past that I'm a lot more familiar with, take a little bit less time to prepare for us to be able to do our lessons. This is going to take a little bit more time to prepare, and I do have some resources that are going to help me along that path. So the first thing I want to share with you is the book by Charles Kovacs. This is called Muscles and Bones, and this is written by a former Waldorf teacher who has since passed away, and these are basically his notes collected into book form. And what I like about it is that the chapters are really short, and they are written in a way that are a little bit imaginative in a way, and I, I really like the format of these books, but because I could use this as a curriculum, I find it hard to coordinate it with our actual curriculum. So sometimes I find that I'm just using the, this curriculum by live education, and sometimes we'll depart for a week or more and then start working through this book as its own curriculum, reading each chapter as our main lesson. Now you can read these chapters aloud to your student, which is not the Waldorf way, or you can read this as ahead of time and then present the lesson, which is more in line with the philosophy. What I found was that in the past when I was not able to prepare a lesson in advance, this was a lifesaver to just be able to read the lesson itself, read it aloud from the book, really helped me in times when I didn't have the space, the mental capability, the time in order to prepare our lessons. So this is a great resource if you want to just buy a single resource that's in the Waldorf philosophy on how to present this main lesson block without buying an entire curriculum or trying to piece it together with other resources because the way that the Waldorf curriculum approaches these different subject areas, especially in science as the students are getting older, is quite different than a typical science unit. So the other resources I'm going to share with you today are ones that in part, I've used with an anatomy unit study and other ones are religiously inspired to add a little bit of something that's personal and religious for our unit. So I've got two books that we're adding into this unit. The first one is called The Quranic Prescription. This is a new book for us and it's going to go through, it says unlocking the secrets to optimal health, but it's going through the Quran and Sunnah, so this would be the resources we use as Muslims to understand our religion and derive laws and rules. And it's going to go through those resources to share information on different foods and their nutritional benefits. So there, there are a few foods that are mentioned that are mentioned in the Quran, for instance, and others that are mentioned with, for their healing properties. But this book, though we, we've only just received it and we plan to use it, my understanding of this book is that there are going to be foods that are, that have been mentioned, but now we're going to go through the health benefits of these foods and how to incorporate them into your diet. And when we're using food as medicine, it is completely different than using food for nutrition and food for enjoyment. Now, the, the main lesson book 
on Hygieia goes through nutrition and physiology. And I w- I've been looking for a nutrition book to add to this unit because we definitely want to go through nutrition and we want to complement what's already included in the curriculum with other resources. And as I was going through looking for some resources, I found that a lot of the books on nutrition were actually more geared towards diet or diet or special diets. So either how to lose weight with a diet or how to reduce inflammation with a diet or how to incorporate this particular lifestyle. So some kind of diet like maybe carnivore or keto or veganism into your um, in as part of your lifestyle. And I was those were really not the books that I was looking for. I was really trying to find something that was very neutral and a bit more scientific in its nutritional content. Now, I know there are books that are out there, and the ones that I really thought would help me for this unit happened to be more textbook oriented, and they were out of our budget for the books that we were looking for. So they were several hundred dollars, and they were probably books that were possibly used in, at a college level. I'm not 100% sure, but those were the books that I was really looking to get. So I still want to include those. I don't have them at the moment. But I do want to include nutritional guides that are very neutral in their delivery. So this this book is not going to be neutral because it's based on our religion. But again, these are not uh, rules on what you have to eat or have to avoid. However, there are foods in our religion that we do need to avoid. And then beyond that, all foods are permissible. So going through this book is going to be really enjoyable as as uh, including a religious aspect into our unit, which I try to do whenever possible. But then at the same time, I'm really hoping that it's also going to provide some nutritional aspects that can be helpful for us for this unit. One other book that's maybe really adjacent to nutrition is Plants of the Quran. And this one is a really beautifully illustrated book that we have used for our botany main lesson block. And the reason why I decided to include this one as well is for the the spiritual and religious aspect. So while this book may still contain all of the the uh, foods that are mentioned in the Quran, I did want to include this one as well for its beauty and for its content, which does now take us a little bit more broadly out of anatomy and nutrition and into, say, geography or history or botany. And I really love including just a little bit more around our main lesson block just to enhance it. Now, this doesn't always work. It doesn't always work to enhance a lesson with more books or greater variety or including other subject areas, sometimes I find that it actually diminishes our main lesson block and takes us away from our goals and adds too much information, we get lost in it. So it's not always a positive thing when you're trying to do a main lesson block very specifically in the Waldorf style. And so including these things are totally personal for us and our family and for our religious desires, but it's not always a positive thing when you're trying to include other books. So usually the curriculum is pretty robust in and of itself, even though it does sometimes offer some other resources that you may add to to for you as a teacher resource so that you can have some background information on on the subject area when you're ready to present. But for the most part, the next two books that I am sharing are ones that I also have for our anatomy unit study, but I am including them here as a teacher resource guide. So this one is by Welcome to the Museum series. This is a really large, beautifully illustrated book that does have some content included. I find that the content is usually not enough to give me enough information for my for my lesson itself. I do love the illustrations. I find that we have in the past used them as illustration inspiration for our main lesson book, but I usually find that I have to supplement this content with other resources. So the other resource that I have that I feel is somewhat like an encyclopedia is called the Human Body Atlas, How the Human Body Works. And this one is quite descriptive, has a lot of illustrations, and they are quite anatomically correct. And I I want to be careful with the uh, pages that I'm sharing because this may not be something that you want to add 
to your students, especially if you have younger students. And I find this to be a resource for me more than my student, unless there is something very specific that my student is interested in and wants to research on her own. But for the most part, this is going to provide me the background information that I feel is necessary in presenting these lessons. Now, the, the last couple of things I want to share with you are the materials that we are going to be using in order to do our main lesson or to put our main lessons down on paper. That's our main lesson books and our fountain pen and some color pencils. Now, by this grade, by middle school, we're working with smaller main lesson books. I believe these are about 10 inches by 8 inches. So yeah, this is just shy of 10 inches and just shy of 8 inches. And these books have both blank pages as well as lined pages. And I also have this one, I believe, is from Paper, Scissors, Stone, Waldorf Supplies. The following ones are from A Child's Dream. I do prefer the ones that have a bit thicker of a cover. And these ones also have line pages as well as blank pages. However, this book has two sets of line pages for every one blank page. And it also includes the onion skin in between as well. So I find that this might be a little bit more suitable for this grade for the number of line pages to blank pages. And I believe this one is just one to one. So yeah, one line page to one blank page, and it doesn't have the onion skin in between. So I do prefer these ones, but actually, I still really love the nine and a half inch by 12 inch main lesson books that are blank on both sides and are separated by an onion skin. And this might be a little bit overwhelming for this kind of unit where there's potentially going to be quite a, this looks like there'll be quite a bit of writing per page and the pages are not lined. I prefer it. My students really don't prefer this. They prefer to have the lines when they're doing their written work. And while I do encourage them to try to write their work in without the lines, they end up using a ruler and drawing in lines. And then I find that the larger format page is really good for illustrations, but again, for a main lesson like this, this might be too much space for your illustrations and you might opt for a smaller format for this main lesson block. Although I think I'm going to go ahead and use these ones and I'm going to use the red color. I like to coordinate the color with the main lesson block. I, I like to use blue for our history and yellow for math and orange for chemistry and physics, purple for language arts. Although last year I did use purple for mineralogy and and i think there's one more color that just i just forgot um so that's just a personal preference as far as the colors that we're using for our main lessons then we do have our fountain pen that by this age we're using pretty regularly although sometimes my students do still like to use pencils and then we have our lyra color pencils and i do like including the larger Lyra color pencils as well, the ones that usually the really young students use. They're a lot fatter. And sometimes we'll still use other art mediums as well when we are doing our main lessons. Sometimes we end up doing a lot of watercolors or working with pastels. It sort of depends on the level of detail that we need for our lesson. For something like this that has so much detail, I prefer color pencils that are that you can sharpen to a fine point so that you can get the detail that's necessary for some of the illustrations that we're going to be doing. I think that's everything that we're using for our Waldorf main lesson block on anatomy. I hope that you'll check out the blog post that accompanies this video where you can find more information on the resources that we're using as well as links to other videos, tutorials, and all of the materials. You can find the link to that blog post down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram and now on TikTok at Pepper and Pine.